what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm gonna be showing you the latest evolution x rom based on android 14 and this is the 29th january 2024 build so the latest one as of right now for this particular device and if you don't know how to flash this rom on your device you can check out the flashing guide from the description talking about the about section this is how it looks like it still looks kind of similar how it used to and we have the evolution x logo up top we have the android version s14 and if you keep tapping on it you will get the android 14's easter egg the evolution x version shows as 8.2 and that is Tikoi as the code name and this is for rafael or k20 pro and the security patch that you are getting over here is pretty much latest of january 5th 2024 the stock kernel here is the 4.14 soviet star kernel and the build maintainer is joe and we have the build date written right here that is 29th january 2024 in the system settings this is how it looks like and if you want to see the system updated this is how it looks like and you can check for updates whenever there is a new one but to actually flash the latest updates i will suggest that use a otg drive or something put the latest build over there and just flash it manually with the recovery in the gestures we still have the quick tap action and the quickly open camera then we have the one-handed mode and all everything is working fine we have the double tap to check phone and lift to check phone as well and you can use it this is how you can actually enable into the ambient display i'll show you yes that is actually working we have the swipe quick screenshot that too is working fine we have the share edit delete google lens and even the capture mode feature we have the quick torch then the playback control and the prevent ringing pretty much huge amount of customization we have the front camera settings right here you can disable the pop-up camera sound effects if you want to we also get this navigation mode that is the gestures and in the settings of it we have the edge long swipe action and you can customize it between these many options we have the navigation hint and i have increased the pill length and radius to the fullest and this is how it looks like with that we have the back gesture height and we have the back gesture animation disabling option then the haptic feedback as well and we have the ime button space you can customize it we have the swipe to invoke assistant that too is working perfectly fine hold handle to search option is there but i think it will work if you are using two or three button navigation but if you are willing to search your contents of the screen you can definitely go into the recent panel and just tap on any section it will actually scan your text just like this so yeah this works now let's talk about the stock launcher of course we are still getting the pixel launcher as you can see in the settings we only have the suggestion disabling option there isn't much but to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page that is working fine swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel in the light theme the quick setting panel still is dark like this but in the notification state show as white just like this in the light theme but you can of course enable the dark theme from here and by the way you can edit and add multiple toggles you can take a glimpse of it if you want to from here which toggles you can add and in the power menu it will look like this as i have enabled the advanced reboot i can go into it and definitely i can reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here the auto brightness over here i would say it works but it works like the one shot auto brightness so that is how it is but yeah overall the auto brightness is actually working no need to worry about it the widgets yes they are actually working and the animations of them are really working smoothly no problems whatsoever as you can see and opening and closing apps it's a very seamless experience over here i would say very smooth let's talk about basic things well in terms of the play integrity it will actually show as meets device integrity and basic integrity both so banking apps will be working perfectly fine here and right now in play store it shows as device is certified so that's a good thing also in terms of drm info it shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p in terms of google photos it actually shows that this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos so a feature like that is really nice to have right out of the box here now this rom also has this bcr and you can actually record calls with it and vaulty calling and stuff will be working perfectly fine and it has a google dialer and even video calling should be working fine here let's talk about the stock camera it has the miui camera or leica camera version 5 actually and you can get all the settings like this and you have the video settings right here there is a lot of option with this and you can go up to 4k and 60 fps if you want to shoot 4k 60 fps as you can see from right here and there is a documents mode then the pro mode videos as well you can shoot that too up to again 4k and 60 fps so pretty much having the Leica camera version 5 right out of the box it's a really great experience even the lens switching option and stuff like that is working perfectly fine no problems and if you just swipe up you'll get even more options like these in this evolver settings you will get huge amount of customizations but i'm not going to show you everything in the miscellaneous settings there are some changes that in the spoofing option there is all the spoofs of the device like enable rom side play integrity then the play integrity fix and the pixel props then the spoof device as pixel 8 pro 
and prove all the Pixel 8 Pro kind of features and we have the unlimited Google photo storage, unlock had a PC in games and the Netflix proof as well. Then we have the jitter, ignore Windows secure flags. Also we have the sensor block per package, USB configuration and stuff like that. And in the theme section you can customize the normal theme stuff. Then in the dark theme we have the pitch black option. Then we have the headline and body fonts. Plethora of options are here including with the icon packs, then the Wi-Fi icon styles and even the icon shapes as well. We also get the brightness slider style changing option. The navbar style changing option is present as well including with the signal icon styles and plethora of options are there with the data icon styles as well. So yeah, you get the idea, you get huge amount of customizations over here, no problems with it. And if you want to enable always on FOD, you go into the UDAP, then just enable this always on fingerprint. You can also customize the lock screen clock style but these are the old Android 13 kind of lock screen clock style. If you want to enable these ones, you have to go into the wallpapers and styles and just select the default Android 14 clock, then you can use all of those. We also have the island notification options if you want to use those. We have the heads up, then the notification sound if active and the in-call vibration options and stuff like that. So I am not going to show you all the customizations, but these were the customizations which are present. In the app settings, we also have the cloned apps right here. So you can have the dual apps kind of feature with this. You can actually log in to two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook with this kind of feature. And we also have the game space so you can add any game over here. If you want to have a gaming overlay on that and you want to check the gaming FPS, you can do that over here. In the notifications, we still have the flash notification kind of feature and it will look like this if you enable that. So pretty interesting Android 14 kind of features are already here. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. And if you just scroll down a little bit more, you will get the sleep mode, the per app battery optimization. Also, you will get the battery health that is for me showing as 92%. The battery temperature also shows up. That's really nice. We also have the cycle count. So that is actually showing 99 for me because I have replaced the battery. And here we also get the battery charge warning, the sleep mode and the charging control as well. You can enable that. But if you enable the charging control, the fast charging will slow down. So be careful about that. But overall, let me talk about the battery life. With the Aku battery app, I have tested it with. My screen on time here, it shows more than six hours. But most of the time my device was in standby. That is why maybe it is showing a little bit lower. But I can definitely say it will give you about seven to eight hours of screen on time without any problems. The screen off here shows for me as 12 days or more than that. That's because my device was in standby for most of the time. So these are all estimated numbers and even the combined use it shows about seven days or a week. So a huge amount of battery life that I'm getting over here you can say. For me in the battery health it shows as 87% in this estimated kind of thing. And fast charging is also working perfectly fine, no need to worry about it. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the ring alarm, etc. volume controls, the volume steps are there. Then we have the pulse, the live caption now playing and the media kind of features. Vibration and haptics, you can customize the touch feedback and stuff from right here. You can enable the brightness slider haptic, then we have the quick setting tile vibrate on toggle touch. Then the volume haptic feedback is there as well in case you need to enable all of those. And there is a ringtone vibration pattern changing option, then the part app volume control. Dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, etc. And then we have the universal kind of haptic feedback intensity customization. And the haptic feedback is really improved over here that I have to say. There we have the clear speaker option as well. There is no me audio Dirac or Dolby Atmos over here as of right now. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness. And by the way, the volume panel looks like this. You can expand it just like this. And we have the extra dim right here. We have the lock screen kind of settings. We have the use device control. Then the shortcuts you can actually change for the lock screen. We have the always show time and info that's the always on display. We also have the lift to check phone right here and the always on fingerprint you can enable that from here too. We have the dark theme kind of settings right here. Then we have the display size and text basic and 14 kind of features you can say. And the nightlight option is also there you can change the intensity of it from right here if you want to. We have the live display kind of customization and we have the color calibration as well the RGB control of the screen pretty much. Then we have the colors I have been using it with a boosted option. Then we have the allow window level blurs, the de-steaming is there and you can actually schedule the de-steaming if you want to just for night time and we have the smart pixels as well, the burn in protection options are there, screen protector mode, prevent accidental wake up or the pocket mode is there and there is the pocket detection as well and there is wake up on plug as well. In the wallpaper and styles, this is how it looks like and I have been using a fresh walls wallpaper but you can use any wallpaper in the home screen settings. If you go into the more settings, there is the AI kind of wallpapers, you can use them if you want to. Then we have the emoji kind of workshop over here, you can use that too. Then we have the mirrorless and all and these are pixel kind of wallpapers you can say 
come alive or live wallpapers are there like the living universe option is also there you can download any wallpaper and you can use them there is also this community lens curated culture all these kind of pixel kind of wallpapers if you just scroll down more in the home screen option we have this themed icons and the upgrade you can set up to 5 by 5 and if you go into the lock screen you have the android 14 kind of lock screen clock style that you can change from right here and if i enable the always on display the animation of it definitely looks so nice i have to say now let me show you the security settings this is how it looks like we have the device unlock right here and in the settings of it we get many features like the auto confirm unlock quick unlock and the scramble pin layout all these kind of features are present right now and we have the fingerprint and the face unlock option right here i'll show you the face unlock later on but let me actually show you in the more settings you do get the app lock right here so you can add any app that you want to lock over here in the settings of it and we also have this hide developer status so you can actually add any app to actually not get the access of developer kind of settings if some app doesn't work when your developer options are turned on you can just add that app with that particular feature i'll just disable the always on display for the time being and here i'll show you the pickup gesture right now let me show you that and as you can see pickup gesture is actually working perfectly fine and the screen of FOD, when the screen is completely off, I'm just tapping the fingerprint scanner area and as you can see, it unlocks. So the screen of FOD is actually working fine. Now with the always on display, let me try that from the always on display. And here, just notice the animation, how beautiful it looks. And here, going into the lock screen. And from the lock screen settings, just make sure you have the tap to check phone disabled. And then we have the double tap to check phone enabled. And with this double tap to check phone just turned on, you will have this double tap to check phone perfectly working right now, as you can see. Otherwise, it will just flip back into the always on display and it may go try to go into the lock screen, but it will go into the always on display. It's a little bit confusing, but yeah, just do that so that you get the double tap to work working properly. And this is how the animation looks like. Looks really, really nice, I have to say. And the fingerprint scanner again is working perfectly fine. No problems. This time it took a little bit more time. I don't know why. But right now, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. And the ripple effect and all the animations, just notice how beautiful it looks. Now let me just set up the face unlock. But let me just try that. I'll just double tap to sleep on the status bar and double tap to wake. Okay, so right now it's not using the face unlock, so that's nice that I have to actually swipe up to get the face unlock working or else I can just tap the fingerprint scanner if I want to unlock with the fingerprint scanner. But I'll swipe up and as you can see right now it shows recognizing face and it unlocks. Let me try one more time. So yeah, face unlock is working perfectly fine. Now let's try with the app lock. Okay, so with the app lock too, it will try to unlock with the face unlock if you have that option turned on but i can also unlock it with the fingerprint scanner or let me actually lock the device again and let's just unlock and point the device towards my face with the app lock and as you can see it actually does that unlocks and goes straight into the app with the face unlock so that's really nice that you can use the app lock with face unlock or fingerprint both but if you don't like that just delete the face data that's how you can only use the fingerprint scanner to actually get the app lock working now let's talk performance of course the display doesn't have any kind of overclocking in this rom as of right now and with that it is only showing 60 hertz because this rom or this device actually has 60 hertz display and with that i would say it's smooth but of course if you switch from a 120 hertz display you will definitely notice that so that's how it is but in twitter or stuff like that let me actually show you a feature so here i can actually select some particular text and i can just tap on this three dots and i can tap on read aloud and with that got my PlayStation 5 Mini IEGS 5. As you can see, it just reads aloud the text whichever you select. So these kind of features are really, really nice to have, just like a pixel device, I would say. And even in Twitter, the scrolling and all, everything is very, very smooth, no problems whatsoever. And it scrolls really, really fast. And if you open multiple different apps, just like YouTube or Play Store, whatever you want to open, and you can switch between apps really, really fast, no problems whatsoever. The RAM management here, it's really great that I have to say and all the apps will stay in memory no need to worry about it and in case you want to see the performance benchmarks on this particular ROM here are the N220 Gigwin score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance 
So let me know down there in the comments what you guys think about the latest Evolution X ROM on the K20 Pro. I feel this is one of the best experiences out of Android 14 that you can get with a huge amount of customization and almost every feature is really really useful for me at least as I am daily driving it on my Poco F5 as well. So if you are daily driving your K20 Pro, definitely let me know if you will try this ROM or not. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNT signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.